Welcome to this tutorial on frequency response diagrams. Unlike the waveform diagram, which shows amplitude over time, frequency response diagrams show amplitude and frequency frozen at a moment in time. They are used for four primary purposes. Firstly, to demonstrate that a device does not change a sound wave that is passing through it and has flat frequency response. Flat frequency response is often desirable for devices such as microphones, microphone preamplifiers, mixing desk signal paths, amplifiers and loudspeakers. Secondly, to show how an audio signal will be changed if it is passed through a device. Some devices, such as microphone preamplifiers and compressors, are designed to deliberately enhance a sound. Thirdly, to show the range of changes that a device, such as an equaliser, can make to a sound. And lastly, it is used to show the relative amplitudes of all the harmonics or frequencies in a sound wave. The frequency response diagram has two axes, frequency and amplitude. Because human hearing extends between 20 Hz and 20 kHz, the frequency axis often reflects this range, but it can be wider or narrower. The amplitude axis will have a scale showing decibels. This can be a simple increasing scale or a bipolar display showing which frequencies have been reduced and which increased. A line plots the amplitudes of the different frequencies. If the diagram is being used to show a device's frequency response, including how close it is to flat and where its response deviates from flat, it will have a bipolar amplitude axis so that frequencies that will be boosted or cut can be shown. To test a device's frequency response, a test tone containing multiple frequencies at equal amplitudes, typically between 10 Hz and 30 kHz, is sent to the device. The output is then analysed to see which frequencies have been altered. This example shows that a device will pass most frequencies unaffected, boost the level of frequencies at 3 kHz to add clarity, but is unable to handle frequencies below 30 Hz or above 15 kHz, both of which will be cut. Flat frequency response means that a device does not change the amplitude of the frequencies of an audio signal passing through it. In practice, very few audio devices in the studio achieve flat frequency response, although some, such as analog to digital converters, get very close. Device manuals often have frequency response diagrams to show how a sound will be enhanced, perhaps in order to add character or warmth. This is very often a device's unique selling point. This diagram shows the frequency response of a microphone designed to have a specific character. Some devices, such as equalizers, are designed to allow a user to control the frequency response by setting the amount of cut and boost that a filter will apply. In this case, the device's manual will show the range of changes that can be applied. This example shows the range of frequencies and the amount of cut and boost available from an equaliser's mid-range filter. This example shows a sound that has been EQ'd to reduce its mid-range frequencies. There is a simpler version of the frequency response diagram which simply shows the relative amplitudes of all the harmonics or frequencies in a sound wave. In such a diagram the amplitude axis is not bipolar and simply increases from zero upwards. This type of diagram is useful for visualising the balance of bass, mid-range and treble in a sound or a completed mix. The script for this tutorial can be found at our website projectstudiohandbook.com and finally don't forget to subscribe at our website or Facebook or Twitter channel in order to receive notification of new videos, blog posts and member only extras. Thanks very much for watching.